Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the thanks right now, to give him all the praise right now, and to give him all the glory. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and every last one of them should always be glad and always rejoice in it. We serve an on-time God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a powerful God. We serve a God who is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We serve a God who still sits on the throne, who still performs miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. And he is so worthy. Yes, he is. He is so worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter what you are going through, what you are facing right now. Jesus wants to hear from you. Whatever it is that's on your mind right now, whatever it is that's on your chest right now, Whatever it is that got you weary, whatever it is that got you upset, whatever it is that got you confused, whatever it is that you're not understanding, what's going on right now, you need to go in your prayer closet room right now today and have a conversation with the Lord. He is waiting on you and he's available. And if you have not have a personal relationship with Jesus, and if you have not welcomed the Lord into your home, into your life, or even your prayer closet room, he's waiting on you. He's available. Please return back to your first love. Because Jesus is your everything. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, <clears throat> we just come before you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me your thanks, give me your praise, give me your glory. We just thank you, Heavenly Father God, for who you are, what you've done, and what you're about to do. We just thank you, Father God, for the open doors right now. We thank you, Father God, for the blessing. We thank you, Father God, for the breakthrough. We thank you, Father God, for the miracle. We thank you, Father God, for the harvest. We thank you, Father God, for the rain that's coming this year. We thank you, Father God, for the connection. We thank you, Father God, for the resources. We just thank you, Heavenly Father God, for everything that you've done and everything that you're doing, how you're turning things around in our life, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, for the favor, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, because you have your hands on us, Father God. We thank you, Father God, because you have us engraved in the palm of your hand. We just thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Father God, for your love. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, for your patience that you have for us, God. We thank you, Father God, for this word that we're about to receive. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, for this powerful message today. That's going to keep us full today, keep us satisfied today. And there's no place, Heavenly Father God, that we're ready to be at right now today, Jesus, but right here in your house, right here in your sanctuary, Father God. Give me all thanks, give me all praise, give me all glory. We just thank you, Father God, how you're restoring everything, Father God, what the enemy has taken from us, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, for your love that you have for us, Father God. Father God, we thank you, Father God, that you're doing a new thing in our life right now today. We thank you, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, for the for the light that you shine on us, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that peace that you give us, Father God. Father God, this is your time, this is your moment that I know for a fact that you're about to show up, that I know that you're about to show out. Let your will be done today, Father God. Let your words go out and she never turn by board today, Father God. Father God, I believe and I declare and decree right now today, Father God, that someone is ready to give their life over to you right now today. Someone is tired of hiding. Someone is tired of being in darkness. Someone is tired of living a, a life that they don't want to live no more, Father God. And the angels are already rejoicing in heaven right now. And Father God, you should get all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory, Father God. Family, Father God, this is your house. The house that you built on solid ground. The house that you built on solid foundation. The house cannot be moved, shaken, or bothered. Heavenly Father, Abba, Father, you are welcome right now. You're invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord. Right here in your sanctuary right now. Right here on your YouTube channel, right here on your platform, right here in my sister's home, right here in my sister's life, right here in my brother's soul, right here in my brother's life. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you to do a new thing in my brother and sister's life. I'm asking you, Father God, to soften their heart right now. <clears throat> I'm asking you, Father God, to quiet their mind right now today, Father God, so they hear your voice right now. I'm asking you, Father God, to take control of my brother's and my sister's life or their situation and their circumstances right now. I'm asking you, Father God, for a favor. <clears throat> For my brothers and sisters right now. I'm asking you, Father God, to move through their life right now. I'm asking you, Father God, for a touch right now. I'm asking you, Father God, to send angels right now. I'm asking you, Father God, for a sign for my brothers and sisters right now. I'm asking you, Father God, to fill my brothers and sisters up right now today with more of the Holy Spirit right now today, Jesus, because they want more of you and less of themselves. 
Father God, I know that you're about to do some things in my brothers and my sisters. Like we claim it right now, we receive it right now today, Father God. And Father God, let your will be done. Glory be to God. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. You're invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord. Right here in your sanctuary right now today, Father God. Right here on your YouTube channel, right here on your platform. Right here in my brother's home, right here in my brother's life. Right here in my sister's home, right here in my sister's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to comfort us right now today because you are a comforter. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to quiet our thoughts, quiet our mind right now today so we hear your soft, still voice right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move through this place right now today and ask us the Holy Ghost fire through this sermon, through this service right now today, Father God. Heavenly Father God, ask we repent of our sins today, Father God. Please forgive us for our sin, known and unknown right now. Wash us through your blood right now. Clean us as white as snow right now. Heavenly Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiving us for our sin. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean state. Thank you, Father God, for the, under, um, the understanding. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity. Thank you, Father God, for coming through, Father God. Heavenly Father God, I'm here today to let you know that I'm available for praise. I'm available for service. I'm available for the kingdom, but most of all, Jesus, that I'm available for you. Heavenly Father God, I'm available for prayer, praise, and service right now today. Heavenly Father God, before I get started, it's something that's always in my mind. It's something that stays in my spirit. It's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue and the fruit of my lips. And I just got to tell you how I really feel about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. That's why I praise you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify and shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I shout out glory and hallelujah the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I pour my heart out to you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I trust you the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I brag, that's why I boast about you. That's why I talk about you all day long, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory and hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. The Lord spoke this word in my spirit today, say, they need you again. I don't know who God is talking to right now, but he told me to tell somebody right now today that they'll need you again. Despite how they lied on you, but you still can't take my gift. Despite how you snitched on me, you still can't get my gift. Despite how you spread rumors about me, you still can't take my gift. Despite how you put me in the pit, you still can't take my gift. Despite that you put me in a prison cell and had me locked up from, for years and years, you still can't take my gift. Regardless how you're spreading rumors about me, you still can't take my gift. It doesn't matter if you unfollow me on social media. That's okay. You still can't take my gift. Regardless if you don't clap for me, you don't root for me, if you don't tell nobody what I'm doing, that's okay because at the end of the day, you still can't take my gift. But you don't realize the gift that God has gave, gave me is the gift that's going to help you at the end. The gift that God blessed me with is going to be the gift that's going to help you at the end. That's why God said, don't worry about it because at the end of the day, they'll need you at the end. Right now, they can't even see it right now because the enemy has a, a blindfold over their eyes. They've been a puppet behind the enemy right now. They don't understand the logic of what's going to go on. They don't understand the logic of what's going to happen at the end. They can't see that far. They have no idea that you are the one. You are the one that's going to break generational curse. You are the one that's going to be the first one in your family that's going to stand out and be some. They don't realize that you're the one that God has already set and has already marked you because you are the chosen one. They don't understand that yet. But at the end of it, they'll see it. But at the end of the day, I know it's make you feel some type of way how they mistreat you. How they doing you? But that's okay. You still can't stand my gift. Even if you don't want to be my friend no more, that's okay too. You still can't stand my gift. 
even if you don't want to be in this relationship with, with me anymore. That's okay too, because you still can't steal my gift. Even though you want to end this marriage, that's okay. You still can't take my gift. Even though that you want to end this business deal, this business opportunity, that's okay too, because at the end of the day, you still can't steal my gift. You still can't steal it. You see, the enemy is using them against you because why? It's the gift that God has, oh, help me this thing, Jesus. It's the gift that God has already placed on you. That's why the enemy is using them against you. That's why they're flipping on you. That's why they don't want to love you. That's why, they that's, why, that's why they're unfollowing you on social media. That's why they're not clapping for you. That's why they're not rooting for you. That's why they're not cheering you on. It's because the enemy is using them because why? The gift that God has given you and your gift is going to do something for them, but the enemy has not told them that. Ain't told them that at all. That's why God said they'll need you at the end. And God's going to show you how they're going to need you at the, at the end. Regardless of what they're doing and regardless of what they've done to you, they're going to need you at the end. Because one thing about that gift and that vision that God has given you, the enemy already knew about your gift. Your gift was a little different, a little special than everybody else because the word of God does say that he gave all his kids a gift, that he would make room for that gift, but your gift had a vision to it. Your gift was going to do something extraordinary that any other gift was not given to somebody in your family. See, the enemy already had a hit on you from day one. The enemy has have already targeted you from day one, even though you didn't even realize what God was about to do. You didn't even realize that God was going to show you something. You didn't even realize that God had mocked you. You didn't even realize that God had chosen you. But the enemy knew. So the enemy already had an APB out on you from day one. He already had his goons and his goblins and his grimness out on you from day one. So what he was doing, he sent other agents, which is people that you were close to, to, what, to attack you. Because why? Your gift, and he was jealous, and he was and he was disturbed that God gave it to you because he already knew what God was going to do for you and how God was going to show up and show out in your life because why that gift, and he wanted all for himself. He was selfish. He didn't want God. He didn't want God to give that to you. So by the enemy he didn't want God to give that to you, he was already in his feelings about it, and what he was going to do. He was going to use family members. He was going to use friends. He was going to use people that you thought that you was in love with, either a boyfriend or a fiancé or a girlfriend or a fiancé or a husband or wife. He was going to use them to antagonize you because of the gift. It's not them that's doing it to him, doing it to you. It's the enemy that's using them as a puppet to do it to you because why? It's all about that gift. And they try to find every any way for that to come true. Because the moment and then God said, when God closed that deal, which that deal is about to close this year, this season, it's already over with. And watch how the same people that lied on you, they're going to need you. The same people that spread the rumors about you, they're going to need you. The same people that, that falsely made accusations about you, they're going to need you. The same people that put you in the pit is going to need you. The same people that put you in prison is going to need you. The same people that unfollow you on social media, they're going to need you at the end. But it's all part of the purpose. Everything that you are going through right now today is supposed to happen. Because that's the only way that God is going to get the glory out of the situation. And yes, God is going to get some glory up out of this situation. He's going to show you how. Can you please turn your Bible to Genesis 37? And we're going to read verses 1 through 8. Then we're going to go to um, Genesis 37. We're going to read verse 19. Then we're going to go to Genesis 42. Then we're going to go to Genesis 45. If you have your Bibles open for the reading, shout out glory, hallelujah. Genesis 37. And we're going to read verses 1 through 8. Then I'm going to go to finish off at 19. Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhah and the son of Zilpah, his father's wife, and he bought the fathers a bad report about them. Now Israel loved Joseph 
more than any of his than any of his sons, because he had been born to him in his old age, and made him a richly ornament, robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Look at the word hate. The word hate comes from who? The enemy. Because why? Jesus is love, peace, and kindness. See how the enemies already used the brother against the other brother. Because why? The gift. Even though Joseph don't know about the gift just yet. Even though Joseph don't know about the vision just yet. See, but the enemy already know about the gift. The enemy already know about the vision. So the first thing the enemy did, okay, I'm going to use his own people to antagonize him, to destroy him, to spread lies on him, to spread rumors on him, to put him in a pit, to put him in a prison, and to hate him, and to not to like him, not to even root for him. See, right now they are a puppet up under the enemy's stream. Right now. Because the enemy hate when God is going to do something for his child. The enemy hate because God is, God is about to show up and show it in somebody's life. The enemy hate that God gave you that special gift, gave you that special blessing, gave you that special anointing, gave you the vision so you're going to be the first one in your family because the enemy already know what God is going to do because he already saw it. So he already knew that God had already marked you from day one. He knew. The enemy, is, the enemy, enemy just waited till you got a little older, a little wiser, so you start following God's rules and God's command. That's when he started sending his force. See, he already had his troops already ready for you. He already had his goons and his goblins already out for you. But they can't do that until God showed you the gift. God showed you the vision. That would mess them up. He said, oh, no. I got to use somebody to antagonize him or to antagonize her so they can't get that. I'm going to use someone that's close to him. That's what he does. You can do whatever it is that you want to do for me, but you can't take my gift. I don't care how many goons, I don't care how many goblins that you send after me, you still can't take my gift. You can't take it. Are you following what I'm saying? Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, Look at the word again. They hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And what? They hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. They didn't hate him one time. They didn't hate him two times. They hated him three times. Because why? The dream, the gift, the vision. It wasn't him. It wasn't the brothers that hated him. It was the enemy using him to hate their own brother. That's what the enemy does. He always used someone that's close to you to try to destroy you, to manipulate you. Because that's all what the enemy does, he likes to manipulate. So he was using the brothers to manipulate their own brother. But see, the brothers don't even realize they're going to need the big brother at the end. See, the same people that's manipulating you, the same people that's criticizing you, the same people that's lying on you, the same people that's, 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 um, that's making rumors about you, the same people that's discrediting you, the same people who say they don't want to rock with you no more, the same people who say they don't love you no more, the same people who say they don't want to be in relationship with you no more, the same people who's going to follow you from social media no more, going to be the same people who going to need you at the end. You can do what you want to do to me, but you still can't take my gift. We go to verse 19. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him to one of these cisterns. And he said that a ferocious animal devour him. Then we'll see what comes after his dreams. Look at that. After the gift. No matter what they try to do to their brother, they still couldn't take the gift. They hated him. They didn't like him. They didn't love him. They didn't want to hang around with him. They didn't want to be with him, but they still couldn't take his gift. 
even though Joseph went through hell and back, even though he went to prison, in the prison with rats and roaches, eating, eating all kind of food that was not even healthy for him, but they still couldn't take his gift. Despite what the enemy was doing to him, the enemy still couldn't take his gift. Even the enemy sent ages out on him, they still couldn't take his gift. They couldn't take it. They couldn't take it whatsoever. That was, was, that was what was making them mad. They couldn't take it. They tried, but they failed every single time. Let's go to Genesis 42, and we're going to read verses 6 through 8. Genesis 42, and we're going to read verses 6 through 8. If you have it, so we have it. Now Joseph was the governor of the land, the one who sold grain to all his people. So when Joseph's brothers arrived, they bowed down to him with their face to the ground. So remember in the, in the dream, he said, my sheep rose up as y'all sheep bowed down. So at this point right now, Joseph remembered the dream. And despite what his brothers did to him, what the enemy made, make what the enemy told his brothers to do to him, they still could not steal his gift. Joseph still had the gift no matter what. Even though he went through some situations, but he still can take the gift. So right now, Joseph realized who his brothers are, but the brothers don't even realize who his brother is. They have no idea, they have no clue, because he looked totally different. He looked totally different, he looked transparent to them. But the brother, Joseph, knows exactly who his brothers are. Looking right in their face. But they have no idea they're going to need that big brother. That person have no idea that they're going to need you at the end. Despite what they did to you, they're going to need you at the end. So when Joseph's brothers arrived, they bowed down to him with their face to the ground. As soon as Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them. But he pretended to be a stranger and spoke harshly to them. Where did you come from? He asked from the land of Canaan. They replied to buy food. Although Joseph recognized his brothers, they did not recognize him. Then he remembered his dreams about them and said to them, you are, you are spies. You have come to see where our land is unprotected. No, my Lord, they answered. Your servant has come to buy food. We are all the sons of what? Of one man, your servant, are honest men, no spies. Mm. Let's go to Genesis 46. Now, he go to Banger right here. That's when he gonna need you. They needed you right there. But now, you gonna present yourself to them and say, I am him. Remember what you did to me. I already forgave you. Remember what you did to me. That was supposed to happen. Because if it didn't happen, I wouldn't be in the position where I'm in right now. That's how God's going to get the glory out of this situation, my sisters. That's how God's going to get the glory out of this situation, my brothers. Because no matter what they did to you, no matter how bad they made you feel, no matter how bad they tried to destroy you, they still couldn't take your gift. Are you following what I'm saying? Genesis 45. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I'm your brother Joseph, the one you sold to Egypt. Mm -mm -mm. And now do not be distressed. And do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you for two years now, there have been a famine in the land, and for the next five years, they will be plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your life by a great deliverance. God's about to deliver somebody. But he had to use you first. He had to, let, he had to allow you to go to the pit, but God made a way for you to get out of the pit. God sent you to prison, but he made a way for you to get out of prison. 
God sent you in the valley all by yourself, but God was with you in the valley. God sent you through a storm, but God was with you in the storm. You were going through some situations, but God was with you through your situations. You were going through some circumstances, but God was with you through your circumstances. You was going through some hardship, but God was with you during your hardship. You was going through some difficulty times, but God was with you while you was going through your difficult times. God was still with you. Even though it seemed like he wasn't. Even though it seemed like he wasn't. Amen? Amen. So then, it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, lord of his entire household, and ruler of all Egypt. Now hurry back to my father and say to him, this is what your son Joseph says. God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Don't delay. You shall live in the region of Goshen and be near me, you, your children, and your grandchildren, your flocks and your herds, and all you have. I will provide for you there because five years of famine are still to come. Otherwise, you and your household and all who belong to you will become distute. So right now, the same people that was against you are going to be the same people that's going to need you. Do you see what government they did to him? They still needed him. But you see how God got the glory out of it? Because why? The enemy was after your gift. And when the enemy couldn't take your gift, the enemy was mad. Do you see how the enemy left the brothers alone? Because when the enemy fit, when the enemy know that he has lost, he just go over to the next, he just go to the next victim. Because at the end of the day, that's what the enemy was after. The gift. The enemy knew that Joseph was going to be Lord of Egypt. The enemy knew that Joseph was going to be in charge of Egypt. The enemy knew that he was going to be second in command of Pharaoh. But Joseph didn't know that. God only showed or him this thing, Jesus. God only showed Joseph a dream. And in that dream, God did not get in God did not get in details on what Joseph was going to be. God never gave him, got in details to let Joseph know that he's going to be charged of Egypt. God never told Joseph that he's going to be second in command of Pharaoh. He never told him that. He just showed him a dream. And that dream became a gift. And that gift was so powerful that the enemy couldn't stand what that gift was going to bring. So what the enemy did, the enemy used the people that was against Joseph to distract him because the enemy already knew what their dream and what their gift was all about. So despite what they did to you or try to do to you, they still couldn't take your gift. By the end of the day, they still was going to need you at the end. Do you see how the brothers still needed Joseph at the end? Amen. So let's go to um, verse 10. When the news reached Pharaoh, palace that Joseph's brothers had come. Pharaoh and all his officials were pleased. Pharaoh said to Joseph, tell your brothers, do not load your animals and return to the land of Canaan and bring your father and your families back to me and I will give you the best of the land of Egypt and you and your wife were Egypt and you can enjoy the fat of the land. You see, no matter what, they still going to need you. God is telling me to tell somebody right now today. They still going to need you at the end. You might not see it right now. You might not even realize it right now. But at the end of the day, they still going to need you. And if you know God is talking to you, say thank you, Jesus. And if you like what you heard, go and hit Jesus' like button. Hit the subscribe button too as well. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life, to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. I was praying a simple little prayer that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me and leave me a comment, my YouTube channel is Witness.LT. Always keep Jesus for this place. Always seek him, always honor him, always praise him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. Continue to trust him even though you don't see things happen. Continue. Continue to hold on to Jesus and change your hands and please do not let it go. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever seen their face. 
prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to tend to keep on in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. I'm serving Minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' glory, holy mighty name. Amen.